Good evening. Uh, welcome to the regular meeting of the City of Ojai Historic Preservation Commission uh, for Thursday, uh, June 8th, 2017. Uh, roll call, Mr. Winokur. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the Commission. Chair McCready. Here. Vice Chair Aikens. Here. Commissioner Hill. Here. Commissioner James. Here. Commissioner Quinn. Here. The record will indicate that Commissioner Convery has an excused absence this evening. Thank you. Uh, with that, I will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. If you'll please stand. Begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Members of the public wishing to address the Historic Preservation Commission on items appearing on the agenda are requested to complete a speaker card and file it with the secretary prior to the start of the Historic Preservation Commission meeting. Cards are available in the council chamber's lobby. All comments should be limited to three minutes unless additional time is granted by the chair. Speakers should state their name and address for the record and must direct their comments to the chair, not the audience or press. While the Historic Preservation Commission is in session, members of the Commission, city staff, and members of the audience are expected to maintain order and decorum and to obey the orders of the Chair. With that, I will invite Museum Representative Mark Lewis to take the floor. Thank you. Thank you, Chair McCready, Commissioners, Mr. Winninger. Um, the uh, museum is um, happy to say that uh, our, we are reprising, or is it reprising, our uh, January, February, March Inventing Ojai exhibit in the, uh, on, in the grounds of, appropriately enough, Libby Park uh, during the course of the Ojai Music Festival. In fact, I'll be running over there to man that exhibit uh, momentarily. So we, uh, anyone uh, who had not get a chance to see it the first time or uh, wants to see it again, happens to be going to the festival, come on by. We, uh, we'd love to see you there. We're also very proud that we have just come out with uh, the museum-sponsored uh, third edition of Patricia Fry's uh, iconic local history, o the Ojai Valley and Illustrated History. Uh, in the third edition, the museum, uh, Ojai Museum, Ojai Valley Museum edition, uh, expanded, updated, and uh, greatly um, enhanced by Elise Depoit. And Craig Walker, who just happened to be, by incredible coincidence, <laughs> in the room. And uh, so that is available at the museum gift store, twenty-four ninety-five. And it is uh, it hasn't that the last uh, edition was nineteen ninety-nine. So we're glad to uh, have br brought that out. Finally, uh, I um, will be giving each commissioner a, a copy of the current Montecito magazine, which contains an article by <coughs> yours truly. Uh, but I signed it as president of the museum because it, it uh, basically fr tells our friends on the other side of the hill how Ojai um, basically was the uh, progenitor of all of Southern California's community-wide embrace of mission revival Spanish-style makeovers. started here first. It's forgotten an unappreciated fact, and uh, we're trying to get the word out beyond the valley, and uh, this is part of that. So with that, I'll pass these out and sit down. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Like, uh, an earthquake. No, just as a community, as a as a community-wide um, style, that right. is in a planned sense, not just a building here. Oh. Building there. It took an earthquake for Santa Barbara to get it. And that was seven years later. Uh, yes, right. Commissioner Hill, could you get a copy and get that to Commissioner Combrey? Would you yeah, be able to do that? do that, Mark? Thank you, Mr. Lewis. Uh, with that, uh, consent items. Uh, item number one, the minutes of the May 11th, 2017 regular meeting. Do any of the commissioners have corrections or uh, additions? Uh, one thing that I notice uh, on page three of seven, uh, about a third of the way down the page attributed to me, 
Chair McCready agreed with Mr. Walker's comments on the mid-century modern school buildings on site. Thank you. That's all I have. Are there any other comments or corrections from other commissioners? I make a motion that the minutes are approved as corrected. I second that. So moved. Commissioner Quinn? Yes. Mr. James? Yes. Commissioner Hill? Yes. Vice Chairman Akins? Yes. Chairman Creedy? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, item, item two is uh, the draft action minutes from the special joint meeting with the HPC, uh, Historic Preservation Commission, and the Committee to Approve Public Art, which took place uh, prior to our regular meeting last month. Are there any comments, corrections? Or additions? I have a comment. Um, in this meeting, this uh, the special joint meeting. Um, yes. It didn't seem like we really took part in that. We watched, <laughs> um, and I was wondering why we needed minutes. Well, we did vote on the item. That's correct. They're essentially an act, just action minutes. Okay. Then I move that these minutes be I accepted. Do I have a second? I'd second it. Mr. Winnegar? Do you have a discussion? Can I we? just had a comment. Yes? Do you? Well, m just my comment was I didn't really even see any purpose for us having a joint meeting because we just sat and watched them right. talk. And then, and really, there was very little time left for us to discuss anything so <coughs> seven minutes of the hour right so if we ever had that kind of joint meeting in the future I would like to see more participation by everyone <coughs> rather than just watching some other commission <laughs> it wasn't even the commission it was a committee um, talk thank you Commissioner Hill? Uh, yes Commissioner Quinn yes Commissioner James yes. Vice Chairman Aikens yes Commissioner McCready. Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Can I do an update on that meeting? Okay. Pardon me? I said, can I do an update on that meeting? Oh, yes. Go ahead. On, Mr. on actions Mr. that took place uh, after that meeting. So after that me on that date uh, of that meeting, I believe that was when uh, our artist actually presented the cost. The cost that he presented to the uh, to us that day was twenty-eight thousand dollars. That was first learned about that morning uh, by all parties involved, and so that came as a bit of a surprise. Uh, the board of the museum had not had a chance to uh, to talk about that and to take further action on it. The uh, museum board. Uh, of which I'm a member, uh, met last Wednesday. We meet on the last Wednesday of the month. Uh, and at that board meeting, uh, they discussed the 30,000, which included the extra two for the, uh, for the, Polishing. yeah, the coatings. Yeah. Uh, and so I think everybody, uh, even at our joint meeting, was uh, kind of against not spending that money that it wasn't really worth the value. So at the museum meeting, uh, it was discussed by all of the board members. Uh, the board voted with one abstention, that was me. Uh, and then, so the, uh, the next day, Mark Lewis, who was just here, he is the board president, sent a letter to the city council informing them that uh, we would be requesting an additional $8,000 uh, from the city uh, of Ojai. And so that uh, is being discussed now by the city council and was mentioned as a part of their budget meeting uh, last Tuesday. So that's where we are on that. So basically the museum is waiting to uh, see if funding is available to, to go ahead and to make that change that was approved by us, uh, funding from the city. And so that's the first step of the next steps. 
to see if that money comes from the city. If the money doesn't come from the city, then of course we, the museum board will have to look at what steps to take. But the thought definitely is that uh, to, at this stage and with all of the effort that's gone into find a way to proceed with the design that was approved by uh, in that joint meeting that night. Thank you. With that, uh, public hearing item number three. Uh, resolution for the uh, Smith Hobson House Historic Landmark no, uh, number 23. Mr. Winokur? Yes, Mr. Chairman, I'm going to address both three and four in part. Um, both of these are the resolutions that are a follow up to the Commission's previous action on both of these uh, historic resource surveys. Uh, item number three concerns your uh, action to recommend designation of the Smith Hobson House, which is the City Hall, uh, and the surrounding the, uh, property, the estate on which it's located, uh, to the City Council for designation as a um, uh, historic landmark. And uh, item number four is a resolution that concerns um, uh, Ojai Grammar School, Nordoff Grammar School, uh, Chaparral School, um, the, the, um, the property that is the uh, subject of the second uh, historic resource survey. Um, we've provided uh, draft resolutions for your consideration. They include the documentation with respect to the um, uh, significant characteristic and features of the uh, of both uh, the recommended landmarks with respect to um, item number four uh, you were provided by email with an updated uh, historic resource survey as a result of your uh, discussion at your last meeting um, based on your direction uh, city staff asked that uh, provenience um, group uh, who were the consultants that prepared both of the historic resource surveys uh, include the um, the kindergarten building uh, which is the postmodern or uh, uh, mid-century mid um, building that you referred to er earlier um, and uh, that analysis did find that there was significance uh, associated with that structure uh, so that has been made part of the uh, draft resolution and is included um, we also sent out to you an addendum uh, that specifically addresses that element of the um, of the school, uh, along with an earlier letter uh, that presented some preliminary information uh, from uh, Ms. Donardo. So, uh, staff recommends that you approve both these resolutions, which would be forwarded to the city council for their consideration at a later date. I'd be happy to try and answer any questions that members of the commission may have. The letters for the people in the audience first. I, well, do we do that? Do you have questions for Mr. Winnegar first? Oh. I'm just wondering when we're, uh, uh, maybe before, I'd like to just update the uh, commission on a uh, discussion. The uh, Ohio Unified School District met about a week and a half ago. They uh, had a meeting that where they were going to discuss the school property and they opened that. Uh, meeting up at 6 o'clock an hour early so people could come and take a tour of the school grounds and so uh, there were a number of people there uh, two city councilmen, Councilman Wyrick and Councilman Haney were also in attendance uh, they took us and walked us through all of the different buildings all the different garages um, all the different administrative offices through the cafeteria area through the kitchen it was quite an extensive tour of all all the properties I found it very very informative very enlightening and and so after that then they began the meeting at 7 o'clock uh, they ended up opening that up for public comment and so um, I uh, uh, made the uh, school board aware of what the process was with the Historic Preservation Commission and all the way back to uh, asking for the funds from the city in order to pay for the historic resources report which we have uh, the delay in getting that information and then finally re getting that information reviewing it uh, in a public hearing for our, at our last uh, our HPC last HPC meeting and um, that we had uh, passed it unanimously of the commission members the six that we had and had forwarded the recommendation to the city council um, they had questions on on you know 
what we were doing, what we had done, what our deliberation was on it, and so uh, they seemed receptive to it. Mark Whitman, who is a local architect well known, also spoke. Uh, he had ideas on for the property. One of the things that Mark said that I appreciated was his comment was that we don't need to be aware, afraid of historic designation. There's a lot that we can do with the school with it having that historic designation in place. Because part of what I talked about was the fact that we have historical landmarks throughout the city that are repurposed for a multitude of things. I don't think we have any landmarks that are actually still doing the, same, the thing that they were built for. Uh, I used the example of the uh, St. Thomas Aquinas Church. Some people still think it's a church. We're trying to uh, improve that. Uh, however, now it uh, houses the Ojai Valley Museum. And so, you know, we looked at it uh, being something that we felt needed to be preserved, needed to be recognized. However, we also recognized that within those, uh, that guidance that we, it could be used for items while still maintaining the historic attributes of the property. And uh, City Councilman Haney got up and spoke too. The gist of the matter was that uh, whatever is going to happen with the property there, it is a long process and there will be many more public hearings that will take place. Um, the question came up and it's come up in the discussion in some places is that uh, we generally don't recommend as a historic landmark property that uh, isn't uh, approved or, and supported by the owners of the property. And they asked about that. We, I said our, our job is to look at properties that are brought to us to decide on whether they are worthy of being recommended as a historic landmark with its historic attributes and then to make that nomination, that recommendation to the city council. And once we do that, whether it's uh, decided to become a city council or become a landmark is indeed in the hands of the city council. Thank you, Mr. Akins. Um, I neglected to uh, invite the commissioners to disclose site visits and ex parte contacts, the same mistake I make every month. So <laughs> I'd like to do so now. Anything else? Okay. And I did the tours. Uh, with that, I will open the public comment period for item number three. Uh, Craig Walker. Thank you. Um, well, first of all, I'm not sure if you're taking both of these properties at the same time. No, separately. They're separate items. Okay. So which one are we addressing? Uh, this is the uh, school. Oh, Smith Hobson, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, so you want me just to limit now to the school? Yes. Smith Hobson. Okay, well, I don't really uh, have as much to say about that one because I think it's a, it's sort of a, a no-brainer that this is a wonderful piece of, of Ojai architecture. You can see the uh, craftsman work that's left over from the days when this was a, a craftsman-style building and then when Mead and Requa came to town. Uh, to do the arcade and the post office and the pergola and, and so forth. They uh, were enlisted by the Smith Hobson family to come and redo this building and make it into a Spanish style building to match the changes that were going on. So in that sense alone, it's, it's very historic. And um, also that it was turned into the city hall by Zelma Wilson, who is a very important local architect and she did the work that kind of drew everything together and made it into uh, the city hall. I think for all those reasons that it would be a great uh, model for the community, for other owners of, of homes and buildings that are historic, for the city to step forward. And they've done a lot of uh, historic nomination and, and landmarking of the buildings they own, and this would be another one that I think is important for them to do. Thank you. Thank you. Can I ask, uh, Don Thieting? Can I ask the well, we're going to finish the public comment okay. period, and then we'll go to the commissioner. Oh, do you have a question for Mr. Walker? Go yes. ahead. Yeah. Um, Mike. I'd be, okay. Sorry. I'd be interested in your um, outlook uh, about the, the entire property rather than just this building. Right. Well, uh, my being a, a, as a landmark. 
Right. Well, it was a, it was an estate, and I think it is important that it be landmarked as an entire property. Some of the buildings were added later, so they're not really conforming to the historic. But I think it's important so that if at some point those buildings were going to be changed, they could be evaluated in terms of how they affect the historic nature of this building. Um, again, it doesn't mean that you have to preserve those buildings, and if there is another building on the property that was built later and is, isn't considered to contribute to the historic significance of this building, then it could be someday that, that the city would want to take that down, and that would be okay, you know, because it isn't contributing or affecting the historic significance. But, um, but if they did want to build something or a wall or something that, didn't, that detracted from it, then they would give you the ability to review it for appropriateness. So that's my feeling about okay. doing the whole. Thank you. Thank you. Don Thieting. Good evening, commissioners. Uh, Dawn Teating, my comment will be brief, and I am, um, as many of you know, on staff at the museum, but I am speaking tonight as a member of the general public. Um, I know that this topic has been on the radar and under discussion for quite some time now, um, many months it has been, and I'm not sure if uh, this point has been made before, but I would like to call everyone's attention to the placard, the dedication placard that is on the wall just outside the chambers here. It reads, this estate was donated to the city of Ohio in memory of Grace Hobson Smith by Fred W. Smith, Barbara Bernard Smith, G. Helen Margaret Smith to preserve this landmark. Reconstruction to use the City Hall was authorized by the Ohio City Council. The date on the plaque is February 22nd, 1976, 51 years ago. And I look forward to this being an official landmark for the City of Ohio. Thank you. Thank you. Elise Dupuis. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Uh, Elise DePoit from Ojai. Uh, I'm here to express my support for landmarking the Smith Hobson House. I first became aware of this property when I was working on my first book about Ojai, the public art of Ojai, and I d delved into the history. And I actually, um, I don't know if you you know it, but there's a lot of Smiths that are, a number of Smiths that are still around, and the uh, Smith business, the Smith Hobson business is still in existence. They have an office in Ventura, and they're really into history. They even have a person in charge of the history of their family and their company, and they have a huge archive there. Anyway, I've been in touch with Greg a number of times, Greg Smith, who's now the head of that company, and Barbara, the granddaughter of uh, Abram Hobson and his wife, she's still alive. She's 90 years old. She lives in uh, Hawaii, and I, I have a number of email communications from her, so I have really connected to the history of this place. And um, I am very much in support of it being landmarked. And I, I think the whole place should be landmarked. The, this main house was the Abram and his wife's house. And the one next door they called the little house was Grace and, and Fred Smith's house. And then what we call the little house here was actually their a garage, and the the what you're calling the barn was uh, Abram Hab Hobson's stables, and he is well known historically for uh, just being an avid horseman. So his horse stable, I think, is really important. Both he and Grace, their da their daughter Grace, loved horses. So I think that's really important. And the tennis court, I think, is really, really valuable. So I'm in favor of landmarking the entire property. I, I didn't read the historical report extensively. I just kind of thumbed through it. And I have a lot of concerns about the historical 
data that that company came up with, but I do support their conclusion. <laughs> but I really would be concerned about using them for doing historical work because there's a lot of errors in it and problems with it. But I don't Thank know you. if anyone's told you that before. But <laughs> anyway. Thank, Thank you. Thank you for your time. Uh, with that, I'll open the uh, commissioner comment and discussion period. Mr. Akins? Again, we're just talking about item number three at this time, right? Yes. We'll, we'll talk about item number four later. Uh, my, I am also in favor of uh, landmarking the entire site, even though there are some non quote unquote non-historic structures because of the very reasons that Mr. Walker mentioned that if there are changes in the future that are with an eye shot of a landmark building they should be protected because of that. So I'm hoping that this language in the resolution is adequate and that it does describe that the entire site is being landmarked so that there would not in the future be confusion over that. Mr. Chairman, um, in that regard, has the city attorney <laughs> looked at it? Yes. Okay. Um, criterion I makes specific reference to the estate, uh, but that could be included. I noticed that. In criterion B as well, if you'd like. Can, can you give us a direction as to what, what you're talking about? Y yes, on attach attachment A, Page three of four. Attachment eight. A. Attachment A. Okay. Page three of four, uh, at the top of the page, or third paragraph, criterion I, makes spe specific reference to the estate. Um, my suggestion is that that be included, that words estate um, be included in that the building, under in the previous page, the bottom of the page, criterion B, that the building and grounds or estate is identified with the Smith, Hobson and Smith families. Thank you. Are there any other comments or questions from the commissioners? Well, I would say that I, I'm very pleased about, um, about this and I like the idea that since it's going to be, since we're proposing that the entire state um, be preserved. Uh, it also gives us a lot more, um, a lot more supervision, so to speak, of the entire estate and uh, preserves the look, uh, would uh, give us that opportunity to preserve the look of the entire thing so that we don't have little incursions here and there uh, if they wanted to take away if we didn't have it, if we had it just as this house, then we wouldn't have any control over the garden here or the, the little building down the, the road over here. And it could get to be a hodgepodge of uh, situations. But to have uh, an overriding uh, document that controls the future of the, the property, I, I really like that. So I'm all in favor of this adopting I commissioner james i think as long as all the buildings contribute to the spanish revival architecture does anybody they do yeah well, if they well don't, then they're just not contributing and <laughs> they don't have to be preserved they would just if you they wanted to add on to the make a three-story or something yeah. and block the view then you would have the ability to review it say well is that really appropriate but not that they would have to preserve some building that didn't fit the criteria. I would say, uh, in addition to Commissioner James's comment, that um, this isn't just about preserving a Spanish Revival um, property. It has a, a tradition of um, architectural aspects of it in the fact that it originated as a craftsman and so to um, 
throw that to the wind. I, I don't think we can do that. And, and likewise, uh, the, the Zelma Wilson um, contributions to this house, we should respect all three of those rather than just Spanish revival. Yeah, that's another of the architectural styles then would be craftsmen, right? So both. Yes. Yeah. Commissioner Quinn? Well, of course, I'm in favor of um, preserving the whole estate as we discussed at our meeting. So I'm actually ready to make a motion if the commission is ready to hear one. Uh, I have one question. Uh, on, at the bottom of page three of four under section one, Mr. Winnegar, it says Historic Preservation Commission hereby recommends to the City Council that a single story adobe duplex, but that same language appears in the next item. So is that yep, an error? That's an error. Okay. That's um, a duplicate of a previous template. So okay. that's okay. That was actually from the Aliso. So yeah, so that language is going to have to be revised yep. in this resolution. Thank you for noting that. Good. So should we revise that language here now? We'll revise it to to indicate that the it's the uh, Smith Hobson uh, home and estate. And so the same issue uh, appears in item four. We'll get to that. So with that, I'll entertain a motion. I approve we um, Commissioner I, Quinn I'm sorry <laughs> I move that we approve uh, this resolution as corrected um, I'll second the motion Mr. Winnegar Commissioner Quinn yes Commissioner Hill yes Commissioner James yes. Vice Chairman Akins yes Chairman McCready yes motion carries this item will go to the City Council with your recommendation thank you Item number four, a resolution for Nordoff Grammar School Historic Landmark number 24. Mr. Winnegar, same and remarks as earlier. Yes, just again, Mr. Chairman, we just, for the record, want to indicate that you were provided with a revised right. uh, historic resource survey and addendum. Thank you. Uh, with that, I'll open up uh, the public comment period for this item. Uh, Elise Dupuit. Okay. <laughs> Don, Don Teeting. <laughs> I tried to mix up the order. Good evening, Don Teeting. Again, I'm going to be speaking as a member of the public um, and not as a museum representative. Um, first, I'd like to briefly just comment. Um, I'm not sure if the commissioners are aware of the 1912 California Cultural and Historic Endowment Report on the Economic Impo Impact of historic, pre historic Resource Preservation. Just to read a few items from the report, it says that in the past, de past few decades, there has been an increasing recognition and study of the value brought to an economy by historic preservation efforts which preserve beautiful things and give them new life when adapted for reuse in our communities. The restored buildings and the inputs required to restore them have the power to revitalize those communities in the process. Results of the report are overwhelmingly consistent regarding the beneficial impacts to a community's economy for rehabilitation activities. It further states that the report demonstrates a strong return on investment in restoring historic properties while also furthering other policy objectives like environmental sustainability and smart growth. Economic impacts of historic preservation are extensive and transformative to all communities. Um, a few comments on the Nordoff Grammar School itself. As it stands, it's a hallmark of our current community. The building is a popular stopping point for visitors on the Ojai Valley Museum's historical walking tour. Additionally, schools themselves are a significant part of Ojai's history. This building is woven into the community's past, present, and hopefully future, and I would encourage a recommendation for the landmark status to the Council. I'd like to also take a moment to read a letter from David Mason. He could not be here tonight. Um, I've provided everyone with a copy. Uh, may I take Please the go time ahead. to read? We it's know Mr. Mason. <laughs> it states, dear commissioners, 
I am ready to support the nomination of the historic Nordoff Grammar School as a City of Ojai Historical Landmark. The beautiful Ojai Grammar School building may very well have come about because of the great 1906 San Francisco earthquake. Living near what is now Dodger Stadium, Roy Wilson, showing an interest in becoming a draftsman, was encouraged by his teachers to move to Berkeley and study the field of architecture. The great earthquake of <coughs> 1906 would cut his education short, but instead would provide him with practical experience through the rebuilding of the great city. With additional training, talent, and education, Roy Wilson moved to Santa Paula in 1914, where he purchased 40 acres to develop homes surrounded by natural beauty. By 1920, he was designing the mansions and important buildings for most of Ventura County. By 1927, the Ojai Valley would be one of the lucky towns to brag on the beautiful and new modern school buildings designed by the famous architect Roy Wilson. The Nordoff Grammar School was designed so that it could be enlarged without changing the design. The Ventura Free Press in 1927 commented, quote, the Nordoff Schoolhouse is spoken of in very complimentary, ter complimentary terms by all alike. I recommend landmark status for this building as soon as possible. Thanking you in advance, I am. Signed, David M. Mason. Thank you. Thank you. Elise? No? <laughs> Mr. Walker? <laughs> She's sandbagging. <laughs> Good evening. Um, I urge you tonight to recommend that the City Council landmark the old grammar school, uh, also known as the school district offices. The fate of the Ojai Theater should be a warning to us all that we cannot take our town's historic buildings for granted. Had the theater been landmarked, the lawsuit might have been unnecessary. The historic significance of the old grammar school needs to be acknowledged and considered when reviewing any future plans to develop the site. I do have some issues with the historic report on this property, um, or excuse me, some issues with the resolution as written, uh, as well as the addendum, and this, these go back to the historic report. I feel that the resolution's representation of diminished integrity is, is greatly overstated. You may recall that the historian's report said that it had enough integrity to qualify as a local landmark and be a Ojai landmark, but it didn't quite have enough integrity to be uh, landmarked or, or put in the California Register or the National Register. And as I read the report, most of that went back to the fact that the tower had been removed, mm -hmm. had been truncated. And um, so when this, uh, the historic significance of this building, though, is not just the work that Roy Wilson did, but the modernization of the building that happened in 1952 by uh, Maynard Linden, who was one of the top architects in Southern California. He, we were lucky in Ojai to get him as an architect who designed several schools in the district as well. But one of the things that's, that the uh, architectural historian re said was that that tower came down after Mr. Linden had renovated the school and modernized it. And so that was more of an afterthought to the design that he had done and that therefore detracted from the uh, historic integrity of the, of the entire building. However, I got the idea, having been a teacher for all these years, that everything that's done to any school in California, the plans have to be submitted to the state architect up in Sacramento. And so I uh, emailed them and asked me if they could send me the plans that had been done in 1952 by Mr. Linden. And I, oh. uh, I got a whole bunch of plans, but I, I did a clipping of this part. And these are Mr. Maynard Linden's plans from 1952. And you can see that um, that tower being lowered was part of Mr. Linden's design. You can see over on the right the drawing of the tower in uh, 
dotted dashed lines in the oh, new yeah. tower down below also over on the far left you can see his elevation that shows that in there so clearly the taking of that tower down as much as i would love to see that tower remain it was part of his remodelization of a remodeling of the of the building and should be considered part of the historic evolution of, of that school so um, in um, the the resolution under criterion C and E, it is really much more, I think, than just the auditorium and the kindergarten building that possess character defining features. You know, it's the whole school. The, all of that was designed by these two men with the arcades and the overhang and the corridors. That all is pretty much this intact from what it was back in 1952 after these two gentlemen had worked on it. So I think the integrity is there that could bump it up into, uh, into register for the, the national register and for the state register. Um, also in the addendum under attributes, it says, unlike the rest of the complex, the Chaparral Auditorium still retains many of the original character-defining features original to the building, including most of the original fenestration, decorative tile, and vent elaboration. But really, when you uh, go back and look through the historic report, the only really thing that's called out as being something that detracts from the integrity of the building is that tower being removed. But now we know that it wasn't just something that the locals did yeah. because they felt it was weak. It was something that was actually part of this remodeling by, by Mr. Uh, Linden. So anyway, I would urge that uh, you do this i think it's something that is in the community interest i appreciate what you say about liking to always get the owner of the building on on board but that it doesn't have to be the case the way the rule is written the community can uh, nominate a building and the council can approve it if they feel it's in the interest of the community and I think in this case it, it really is and it really is in the interest of the district too because if if we could get that up to be eligible for the California register the whoever develops that property is el is uh, entitled to 20 percent tax credit not a not a uh, tax deduction but a tax credit uh, for maintaining it with its historical status. This is uh, the federal historic preservation tax credits. Also, they would be eligible to use the um, historic state building code to do all their renovations, which would bring down the costs of any work that they did on those buildings. And not only that, but the city would be totally free to uh, adopt some adaptive reuse incentives itself, which other cities have done, like the city of Los Angeles has preserved many of their downtown buildings by giving development bonuses, uh, expedited reviews, and waivers of different zoning regulations to people who will develop these old buildings and keep them with their historic status. So anyway, I urge you to recommend that this be preserved. Thank you. Thank you. Can I ask a question of Mr. Walker? Yeah. Chair? Yes. Go ahead. Okay, thank you. Okay, so uh, a, a, another item that came up in, in the discussion, uh, and again, when we talked to the, uh, uh, when I was there and visiting with the school district, you know, I explained to them that uh, we were, at the time we asked for the historic report to be done, we were actually unaware of the significance of the kindergarten building, but that had been brought to our attention by yourself in the discussion when we first made this recommendation. So they're aware of that. We talked about the different standards that are involved. Uh, I was happy when we, uh, uh, when we, uh, and, and the number of standards in that only one of those standards is actually required for landmarking. I'm happy to see in this report that this report of the 11 items that are make it eligible for landmarking, 10 of them are selected. I, I, I don't really, haven't been here forever, but I don't remember 10 seeing the number 10 before of 11. So, um, but the question that came up, and, and again, going back to what you said about the uh, 
tower being reduced uh, because it was a part of Maynard Linden's design rather than uh, purely for uh, earthquake features. One of the discussions was, um, what if somebody came along and wanted to put that tower back up? How would we, f as a historical community, feel about that? Well, I think that would be a decision that you would just have to make. I mean, I think that um, you could very well decide that you would want to put that back up and the city could even offer some incentives mm -hmm. to them to do that. I think that would be beautiful if that tower. My only point was it wasn't just a bunch of local contractors that cut right. that thing yeah. off and put a top on it and <laughs> called it good. It was a, a famous architect doing his modernization of the school and he was one of the pioneering modern school architects as well as doing other architectural work. So he was a famous person doing that work. He, he produced that design, as you can see here. Again, it may have been because the materials were weakened and it needed to come down. So maybe it could be put back up. Okay. I think it probably did, but I think that uh, on every step of the way, when they've added to that building and created what they have, they gained something and they may have lost something. Uh -huh. Like when you go walk around, when you walked around, mm -hmm. there's two places on the um, north-south wing where there's, it almost looks like an entryway, but right. there's rooms there. Well, those were passageways that went through. They were walkways. Well, when they started expanding the school, they closed those up. So you lost the passageway, but you gained something else. So, um, you know, there have been things that have been changed. I mean, how much do we go on integrity of design with the National Register and the California Register? They do, they do. But I think that had Mr. Linden just designed this building from scratch without it even being something that had previously been done by Roy Wilson, it would still be a historic, historic building. And the uh, national guidelines, you know, the Secretary of the Interior Standards, do state that you have to make that judgment that sometimes a, an addition or a new, a new part of the building actually adds to the historic it doesn't detract from it. So that was my point, is that the fact that Mr. Linden included this taking down of the tower in his design doesn't necessarily detract from the integrity or the significance of the building. Great, thank you. Thank you. So, so again, getting back, back uh, th thank you, Mr. Walker. Um, we have a third speaker. Oh, we have another one, I'm sorry. Go, okay. well. Go ahead. <coughs> thank you, I'm just giving her more time. <laughs> Thank you. Elise DePoit from Ojai. Uh, the most historical thing at that property is the bell sitting out in front. We all know the bell came from the original 1895 school that used to sit on that spot. And in every morning the bell used to ring out calling all the school children to, of the town to go to school. And in 1966, uh, when the Ohio Unified School District was formed, that bell was uh, taken and put, put in cement and sits in front of the, the newer school. <laughs> so I thought I'd share that tidbit. <laughs> uh, uh, you have to realize that uh, Starting in 1916, 1917, when the Spanish-style conversion began, and it includes the downtown, the El Roblar Hotel, the Catholic Church, moved on up to Villanova School, the buildings at Cretona. This is just part of this. The school was following this trend that happened beginning from 1916 all through the 20s. And it's a very important component of the whole scheme of the town. So I would encourage you to uh, landmark the school. Uh, whenever I travel, to me, the best towns are the towns that have preserved their historic buildings. They're the most interesting, they're the most cared for, and they're the most popular for tourists to enjoy and and for the citizens I, I just you can't 
it's just very, very important to preserve your, the historic buildings in the town. I mean, to me, the greatest losses this town have were the classic bank building that yeah. stood next to the Libby Park and the Craftsman style house that, uh, Craftsman Scott style school building that was part of the first high school right. on uh, El Paseo. Those are losses, and we don't want any more losses like that. So I appreciate your uh, landmarking the school. Thank you. Thank you. With that, I'll open it up to <coughs> commissioner questions and uh, conversation. Mr. Akins. Okay. So thank you very much. Um, so part of the part of the question that I raised with Mr. Walker was that I would not want to do anything that would enter uh, landmarking this that would preclude uh, someone at a later date from restoring the tower to its height. Uh, however, the other thing I've been cautioned about is the fact that the city of Ojai has a height restriction, and by allowing that uh, tower to go to a height that is beyond the height allowed by the city, since it would be not a school at that time, that that may open its own can of worms. So. Uh, again, just something for the record to keep in mind that, um, if possible, I think I would like at some later date to see the tower restored to its um, original height. Thank you. Uh, I'm still, maybe I'm getting confused here. Is the mid-century modern building that is back on, uh, is it East Aliso? Yeah. Is that a part of this campus? Is that part of this landmarking? How's that described here? I don't see that. There, it's in that this part, right? In the resolution. But in the resolution, Especially. is that in here? Because that's important to me, and I think it's important to Mr. Walker and others. Yes, sir. Mr. Chairman, it's um, um, Maynard Linden has made reference to in on page it's attachment A, page two, two of three. Okay. Criteria so, D. And then the whereas, the first whereas, makes reference specifically to the kindergarten building. Okay. So the kindergarten building is and that building. As does criteria C. So it's, it's referenced throughout here. If I may. Um, and then I have the same question on this uh, item as I did on the last one. Is the city attorney reviewed this? And is the yes. language adequate to protect, protect the entire campus? Yes. And, and the, um, I would indicate that in the object record, there are photographs of both the, exist, the original tower <clears throat> and the existing tower. So there would be sufficient information here to make a determination at a later date whether or not the, these, the, that portion of the building would qualify under uh, state or national uh, criteria. Your resolution really speaks to the city of Ojai mm -hmm. uh, designation. And, th and the argument goes the same, uh, that you know, certain elements of a campus might be purely historic, other elements not, but when you're landmarking that site, you have to do the whole thing because it's in part of the view shed and later alterations to a non-historic element could affect the historic element. So I'm in favor of uh, this landmarking. Chairman Jones, for the record, just want to indicate that the same language that you pointed out in section is that one incorrect? needs to be modified. Okay. And actually there's um, reference in criteria H to a residence that should, yes, I should be school. That. So. We would make those uh, changes in uh, in the uh, recommendation for the resolution. Thank you, Commissioner Akins. Uh, one other item that's come up that was, uh, I think, uh, a question that came up during the tour has come up uh, elsewhere. Uh, people are concerned that if we landmark the entire property, that somehow that would do away with the uh, um, skate park that's there. And I told them we are looking for build. Uh, the justification for this is to. I have some control over the to uh, entire property because we are looking to protect uh, the significant historical parts of the property. Uh, and the skateboard park obviously isn't one of those parts of the property. Uh, and I don't see that anything we're doing would uh, do anything or be detrimental in any way to the skateboard park. Is that correct? That's correct. And there are maintenance structures on the site that would, the same sort of situation would apply. I, I, just for those folks that have worked so hard for the skateboard park, that's your answer. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, 
And there's, there's been tons of conversation about the skateboard park in the past. I, I happen to think it's a good thing. <laughs> Brings the kids downtown and in a safe place. Just getting it on record. <laughs> <laughs> Any other comments or questions? Commissioner Hill? Yes, um, listening to the uh, public um, responses uh, this evening, I was taken by the comments by um, uh, several of them about the, uh, by um, Elise DePoint and by Craig Walker about the limitations that the, this report, um, the historic report, provided. Uh, and um, I don't want to exactly say errors, but I wanted to find out if we could, if you could point out specifically what's wrong with the report uh, so that we have that in our decision. Uh, you appointed, uh, a no, you said there were a number of errors, and you also said that <clears throat> in the report um, that was presented by this company, Pro Provenience. Okay, Smith Hobson. Yeah. Did, did you say Smith Hobson too? No. You said in this one. But it wasn't Smith really Hobson. This one. There was a lack of information because they didn't have the plans from the state architect. Okay. When they, made, when they made that, but I had that thought to write to them, and this plan showed. Yeah. But it wasn't that they did. A yeah, I didn't want to proceed on a vote uh, knowing that there were errors or limitations or uh, things that would uh, come back to haunt us in, at a future time. I'd like to vote for it, but agree that we should fi fix the errors and make it accurate. I well, think they're two different items. Yeah, yeah I understand now that, that the, the difference of Elisa's comments and Craig's. And um, I, to, to ask you both, do you see any uh, prob uh, problematic uh, situations that would occur if we approve this um, tonight, uh, knowing that these situations, and, and I'm, I'm speaking in generalities here. I, kind of, I agree with uh, Mr. Winnegar that okay. what you're concerned with is local, as a local landmark. Okay. I was trying to address the... Uh, on the registry. On the registry. That, I think that will be important. Okay. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I, I would just note that um, although there may be, in fact, factual errors in one or both of these reports, that um, we feel there is sufficient information to to justify your findings in the resolutions, and that's where I would focus your attention is on the resolutions and the sufficiency of the language to justify the recommendation for a landmark. Thank you. That that's great, but I only have one concern, and I would um, agree with uh, uh, Craig Walker in the sense that I would like to see this. It's such a central point uh, to our town, and especially with the notion of raising the tower back to its former glory. Um, that uh, that should be considered for the National Register year, the State Registry. And I wouldn't want to see it. We stop it right here. I would like to revisit that somewhere down the line so that we can um, bring that into, maybe either ask the, the people that wrote the report or uh, with the information that Craig has. I think that's a good idea. So anyway, but otherwise, I'm excited to see this. And I, um, uh, I said at the last meeting how exciting it was for me to, I knew uh, a long time ago that about the, uh, the architect that designed the kindergarten uh, and that this was such an historic uh, uh, place. And that was uh, um, pre- um, it was done originally, this design type was done originally at the Miners Oak School. And then I learned uh, in this report that this was part of what they call in architectural circles, 
the um, the uh, Ojai section, uh, which is a noted piece of uh, documentation of the this record or this um, uh, design breaking uh, style of uh, Maynard uh, Linden and um, the fact that here in Ojai it becomes the focal point for school architects uh, throughout the state and it has been copied by so many other districts in Southern California. Um, and I know, I, I remember how important uh, when we first were, as I first got on this commission, one of the things that I wanted to see was, well, let's look in the, in the guidebooks and the, the history books and find out just how many of Ojai's uh, properties are listed as historic places. And there were so few, I was astounded. Uh, but then I read that one of the places that was listed in uh, Gebhardt, who was a famous art historian, uh, and whose papers and, and section is included at the University of California in Santa Barbara, listed in his book, he created a handbook for people to go visit historic places throughout Southern California. And there's the Miners Oaks uh, Elementary School. And there, I think there were maybe two other buildings in all of Ojai that were even listed. Uh, so I thought that was pretty significant then. And, and the fact that my wife spent 18 of her years uh, <laughs> teaching in, that, in, in this building uh, at the back of the... Uh, uh, the Ojai Elementary School uh, in such an um, important building. I thought that was pretty great. So we have the correction to criteria H, and we have the correction to section one. Are there any other corrections to the resolution from commissioners? Did you want to comment, Commissioner Aikens? Yeah, I have a quick question. Um, the update that we got from the provenience group did. Mm -hmm. Did you ask for it, that, or did they pick up on that, or how did we get that? Yes, we, we asked for that as a result of your discussion. Yeah. Excellent. So uh, two things I want to note. One is a personal feature. This, the, uh, not sure what it was called back then, but that was where my, the grade school where my father-in-law went to school. And so for, for that, Tom. That's at the Oakview School? No, this is at the Ojai Grammar, Ojai Elementary School, oh, Ohio. I think it was at that time. Uh, and uh, two is I would like to personally thank the, uh, the staff, uh, the council who mentioned this in their, I think it was last meeting, asking for this to be sped up. So it is taking uh, perhaps less than two months and then um, again, to the staff for getting this to us so quickly. Thank you very much, and Provenience Group for uh, doing the turnaround on the kindergarten group under a month. So, big thank you to them. Thank you for everybody that's involved in getting us to this point. Thank you. Commissioner Quinn. Thank you. Um, I totally agree with Commissioner Hill and with Mr. Walker. Um, if I would like to see somewhere a directive that the um, consultant rethinks the tower so that when at such time if we're repurposing the building, if we're doing anything, that we know that the tower is there and we can go to state and historic, have incentives for people who would, you, would repurpose the building and would also give us some uh, additional control. So I would like to somehow enter into the record a directive to re-look re at that after we've made this vote. And there's precedent for doing exactly what you requested because the Presbyterian Church, uh, that tower that's on that church now had been truncated. And it had, they took out like a story and a half and they rebuilt that uh, and put in the, the necessary and raised that uh, tower. So you're looking at the, what the tower used to look like. Uh, not what I remember as uh, when I came to Ojai in 1960. 
Good. I, I just want to say, and not only for the purpose of raise, re-raising the tower, but to have state and, na and national historic significance, so pointing out the 1952 plans so that we do qualify um, would be what my goal too. I mean, if it, that led to the, it being restored, that's fine with me. But, but more to have incentives for people who want to use the building um, for other purposes, but retain its historical status. Thank you. With that, I'll entertain a motion. I, I, I would like to uh, make um, a motion to uh, write a directive uh, to be on hand uh, that would uh, espouse the ideas of uh, Commissioner Quinn. As part of the resolution to approve? Yeah, why not? Uh, I'm asking, is that your intention? Sure. <laughs> so the motion is to approve with that. Uh, I second the motion. <laughs> is that okay? It should have a... Uh, a tail on it. It should have just an addendum that uh, there should be a directive that um, would encourage. Mr. Chairman, we would recommend that you add a section two that provides that language that basically says okay. that uh, directs staff to seek reevaluation of the tower element of the uh, main school structure. Okay. Thank you. Do we need to uh, take another motion? No, that's okay. that's fine. Great. Roll call. Commissioner, J I mean, Commissioner Hill. Um, all right. I'm not sure if that also included the consideration for um, state status. Well, that would that's be included in that. That's the intent of that section. Would yeah. be to be, uh, facilitate that. Uh, I for the Commissioner James. Yes. Commissioner Quinn. Yes. Commissioner Eakins. Yes. Chair McCready. Yes. Motion carries. This item will go to the City Council for their consideration. Thank you. Boy, that would be neat. Uh, that concludes our public hearing items for the evening. Are there, if there are any other discussion items, commissioners. I have the um, Commissioner Hill at the um, last meeting we were fumbling around with the idea of having this um, meeting uh, that would be the our goal setting uh, meeting um, retreat it, it was labeled as a retreat and what's happened is that we've gone until We've now exhausted the days in May when people could come and not come. And it was suggested that we add a Sundays to the list. Well, now what I have in front of me is the dates that my wife said that we could. It's getting, June is as bad as May. Uh, so the dates that we could do it, um, if we wanted to do so, uh, would be in June, and that would be either June 24th or 25th. What day is that? The Saturday, Sunday? Saturday and Sunday. I am not available on the 24th. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm available on both days. So, <laughs> so I don't know what the, I don't know, Brian, will you still be going? Not in the country on the 24th and jet lagged on the 25th. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So it looks like uh, we're not going to be able to do this. We will we'll continue trying. <laughs> yeah, one, one of the things that we have done in the past. Um, it's typically been in January. That's when we usually do it. Yes. Uh, and what we do, we don't have uh, the regular meeting that month. This becomes the regular meeting. And what we w would do is conduct our regular meeting first before the retreat starts um, and spend an hour 
uh, at doing our regular business and then go into the aspect of deciding goal setting for the mm -hmm. for the remainder of the meeting so it wouldn't um, see what we're trying to do now we're trying to by plugging it in here we're trying to do two meetings in one month mm -hmm. and I think that's becoming a strain trying to do that let's let's do this let's try to get back on our old schedule and with me. and uh, just say that the commissioners will be thinking about January and that our regular meeting will be a daytime weekend day mm -hmm. and it'll be a, a, a public meeting publicly held note publicly noticed meeting and then we'll go back and we call it a retreat but it is a publicly noticed yeah, and HPC my, meeting right and my house has handicap um, access so you can get into the okay the house thank you are there any other, any other discussion items from commissioners? Commissioner Quinn. Thank you. I was going to bring up what Mr. Walker brought up about the Playhouse, and I've not been on the commission long enough to know why it has not been a landmark, and, um, and so if, if anybody can tell me that, I, or I would like to say, why aren't we considering landmarking the Playhouse? Uh, it's one of our sites of merit, isn't it? Yes, yeah, so it's on our historic sites of merit list, and then the flood happened, and um, you know I th I think it would be up there uh, at the top of the list of of buildings that we'd be focusing on for landmarking, if it were not for that event. Well, would the owner have to apply for that, or is this something we can initiate? We can initiate it, and then you know he has an opportunity to to speak up a. a for or against the landmarking, as you know, that, that would be the typical procedure. He could also apply too. Yes. The person in in the audience that knows more about the playhouse than anybody else is Elise Depoit. She and I spent hours and hours, and days and days, going over the history of that that building, and so she knows all the owners, all their past, and uh, the total history. So. And they have reviewed, when they started the remodel, they did review some of the early colors and stuff with us before, you know, it just got bogged down so terribly. So hopefully it will get resolved and we can get our theater back. <laughs> uh, Mr. Winnegar, do you have a report for us or any dates that we need to be cognizant of? Yes, uh, Mr. Chairman, um, there are no items currently uh, scheduled for uh, the next couple of months. Uh, in fact, we may cancel the July 13th oh, there's, uh, meeting. There's your time for the. There's, <laughs> there's our opportunity. Yeah. Um, Tell Claire. I, I was going to suggest that if you wanted to consider a retreat later in the month or or in the in the month of August, uh, as I, that that would be after the beginning of the city's fiscal year. Um, there might that might be a, a time to work. I know you've done it on a calendar year basis before, but if you wanted to consider yeah. something different, we could look at that. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. With that, we are adjourned. Nope. Oh, I'm nope. sorry. We're not. There's still one other item down there at the bottom called planning report that I just with a report on vacancy. Oh, yes. I'd like to get an update on that. Yes, uh, there are several commission vacancies um, that I believe the city clerk or the records manager intent is ready to uh, solicit appointments and they're just waiting for the uh, the nod or go ahead from the city council from the mayor correct it's it's really the so. mayor that makes that decision I believe that is correct okay so so we're we're waiting for mayor Johnston yeah. I believe that is correct. Okay. And he was supposed to be here tonight. Correct. It, it, it is, because again, when our, our vacancy took place, it was advertised in the paper. Uh, that was many months ago. Right. And I do know of people that have applied for that position and uh, not heard anything back. And so it's maybe making our objective to fill that position a little bit more difficult. So. Thank you, everybody. We're adjourned. Okay. The camera's still on. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. <laughs>